Try and remember how loud that is and the sound it's making. And it's going to make exactly the same sound. There's going to be a little bit of uh, noise because of there's no shielding on any of these wires. See what it sounds like now. Notice it's a, it's a lot louder. So what we've got here is this pickup is detecting this because of the change in the magnetic field and it's amplifying that change. It's picking up the same sound and duplicating it exactly. So how does it do that? Well this video I'm going to explain exactly how that works. First up, what I want to do is just explain the setup that made that was able to make that uh, sound through the pickup. So uh, temporarily, while I'm waiting for the bits to come through, I've just uh, bodged something up so, you could, so that we could see that working. So what I did is I, I took the, uh, the pickup here, the mobile transformer, and I've connected the two leads to a little preamp. Now this preamp is built from two capacitors, two resistors and a transistor. And when I go on to show you how to build a preamp, this preamp for this, um, I'll explain exactly how that works. It's a really nice little circuit. It's probably the smallest circuit you could possibly build for a preamp, yeah? What the preamp does is it just takes this very weak signal, because uh, not designed as a pickup, so it, the, the signal from it is very, very weak. Uh, that means we need to amplify that up uh, a lot more than uh, a normal uh, uh, guitar pickup. So what I've done is I've just built this little preamp here and then I've taken the output from the preamp and then amplified it a little bit more. Now I've got one of my kits here, the uh, computer voice. Just so happens that it's got a little amplifier in it. So I've utilised that. I've just basically plugged it in and turned down the echoing effects so we can just hear it amplified. So that's come out of there and then I've got this very cheap Poundland uh, amplifier. The interesting part about the... Uh, the pickup is how the pickup actually works because I mean, all you've got at the, at, when it comes out is this varying voltage. And what's interesting about the pickup is how that produces a varying voltage. When this varying voltage comes out here, we're just amplifying those variations and we get that, we get exact duplicate of that sound. So it's quite interesting how that occurs and this is what we're going to go through now. I just wanted to show you this setup. So uh, eventually when the, the, the strings arrive and uh, I've got some other bits coming to make a, 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 a better amp than this. So, uh, so yeah, so that's the setup. And now I'm just going to explain, go into a little bit more detail about how, how this works. Basically what we're going to be looking at is what's called Faraday's Law of Induction. And that will uh, explain how, how this works. Faraday himself all he actually done was came up with a law which is basically what it means is his description of what happens there was never any explanation of of why it happens let's go into how he uh, come up with his law what he did was uh, he had a length of wire and he noticed that when he moved a, a magnet near to the wire what actually happened is you could measure a a, a voltage difference between the two ends of the wire. So it seems to be that when you move a magnet close to a wire, charges are induced, and they call it induced current. The charges are forced to move along the wire. And this is where you come up with this succinct little formula here. What this says is, when there's charges and they're moving to one end of a wire, you know, away from their neutral position, because it, in the case of charges, positive and minus, they want to they want to stick together, they don't want to be uh, moved apart. So if you do move them apart, and moving a magnet close to another magnet with a coil of wire will move charges in that coil of wire apart. So what you're doing is you're moving those charges against their neutral position, and that, in, in effect, bunches them up at one end. We've given those charges so much energy per number of charges we've moved and that's called voltage we got meters that can measure voltages now you've seen a voltmeter that's that's what you use so when we measure the voltage here we find that it's directly proportional to these things firstly it's going to be a high of a high value when the number of turns is very many so if that end number there is very large you get a larger voltage 
also is the area now this ba that actually the b represents you know when you move two magnets close to each other you feel that force well that force is known as the magnetic field force and they've given that a symbol called b now if you if you have a large magnet then with a large magnetic force then that also will increase the voltage so you can see it's directly proportional to b and a is just the area you'll often see in books they describe b times a as the magnetic flux so when you hear the term magnetic flux it just means the magnetic field times by the area so you can imagine that if there's a large area with the same magnetic field then that's going to be a larger change in the voltage and that's how that works here so voltage is proportional to how many turns there are so the bigger the number of turns the larger the voltage it's also directly proportional to the magnetic field and the area so the bigger the magnetic field or the bigger the area again the larger the voltage and the other interesting thing is that it is also proportional to the rate of change of this uh, field so you can see if this time is a very short then you divide uh, a number by a very small number you get a very large number so if we can make a change real fast then that voltage is going to go up all of those things there is called Faraday's law of induction we know then taking this if we uh, move some metal across here very fast then that's going to induce a voltage across these two two terminals the faster we move it the higher the voltage. Get a magnet on top of this and move that against it again that's going to increase the voltage across here so really what we're saying is if you can imagine uh, a guitar string, I'll just use this, it's not a guitar string but if we imagine a guitar string now and we pluck that then that's going to move very fast when that moves up and down it's going to affect the magnetic field now because the magnetic field is affected this term here will change so you can see, if you pluck the string, that vibrating, of course, using this formula, we can see we're going to get a vibrating voltage then. So the voltage at the two ends here is going to be exactly at the same frequency as what we pluck that string at. So we've got a coil of wire wrapped around a magnet, north and south. I'm showing the magnetic field lines coming out here. Now here along the top is a guitar string. When we pluck it, we're moving it really fast and we can hear it with our ears. It modifies the magnetic field at the same frequency as what the string has plucked. That is connected via an amplifier to a speaker coil, coiled wire. And the wire has charges moving back and forth. Now the, the charges moving back and forth in the wire also produce their own magnetic field and that magnetic field interacts with the fixed magnet now as you know if you try and pull two magnets of the same pole together they will repel so sometimes those two this induced magnetic field and the actual fixed magnetic field will repel and sometimes it will uh, attract so that will push it in and out at exactly the same frequency and this is all we're doing we're utilizing Faraday's law of induction we're using induction here and induction here and that's it that's really how it works so I've tried to do this in the space of about 10 minutes you know so you, you know don't don't worry that you didn't get all this but if you can grasp the idea that the voltage across a wire uh, in a changing magnetic field is related to this very simple equation in other words the number of turns of wire will increase that voltage and it's also proportional to the magnetic field and the area of that field and how quickly it's moving so what you end up with of course is an exact duplication of those sound waves going converted to a voltage and then converted back to sound waves again at the speaker so that's that's it and there is no other explanation of it now why uh, <laughs> why is it that uh, um, a metal rod will change a magnetic field and why why a changing magnetic field causes a current to flow in a wire well that's a totally different question I mean that's a question that uh, scientists have been trying to figure out for years you know uh, they've got theories none of the theories are absolutely definite but there you go so don't try and uh, don't try and figure that one out because nobody's really figured that one out properly even to this day so there you go that's uh, Faraday's law of induction and how this little uh, pickup works okay now it's time to test this uh, 
mobile phone transformer pickup. So uh, this is how it sounds without it being connected to any kind of amplification. Remember that sound because uh, what we're going to do is when we connect this up to the amplifier you're going to hear that exactly that same sound. The only difference is it's going to be slightly louder. So remember that sound and how loud it is. Right, so let's now switch on some amplification. You're going to get a, a little bit of noise because uh, there's no shielding on these wires. So that's the noise, but don't worry too much about that noise. Okay, now let's have a listen to what it sounds like now. I think you notice it's uh, slightly louder. So there we are, we got a musical uh, hacksaw blade. <laughs> 